Over the 27 year history of the Pokemon franchise, there have been hundreds, probably thousands of products released. This summer, I traveled across Japan and searched secondhand stores for rare, vintage Pokemon toys and merchandise. And today I want to show you all the cool, interesting, and just straight up kind of weird Pokemon products that I found in Japan, starting with this. Now, honestly, I have no idea what this is. It looks like some kind of children's toy, a game. And I bought this for just 220 yen. That's less than $2 US. It's clearly from the Gen 4 era. It features Chimchar as the main Pokemon. And it looks like some kind of game you can play to battle other Pokemon. I like that it's got a little handle, you know, so you could bring it to school or something to play with your friends. And if we open it up, it comes with a bunch of different cards. I, I don't know, inserts. This goes on this side and then the Chimchar goes here. And does it spin? Not really. You point it at a Pokemon. Guess the weight of, guess the weight of the Pokemon. Kotai, Kotai, does that mean weight? Answer, what? What is Mondai? Is that a question? Problem. Oh, I get it, I see, okay. The question is, Kono Pokemon no Omosa wa. I don't know what that means. It means what is this Pokemon's weight? What is this Pokemon's weight? This game kind of sucks. <laughs> Who's that Pokemon? It's Giratina. How is that? How is that difficult? I'm saying that as if this isn't clearly a game made for children. No wonder it was two dollars. It kind of sucks. <laughs> Next up is something that's actually really cool. Mewtwo strikes back something or other. The price for this one 330 yen about two dollars us i feel like i should be wearing gloves for this pocket monsters mewtwo strikes back this is from like the time of the first pokemon movie this feels special but like whoa it has it has like some kind of forward a note here from uh tsunakazu ishihara president of the pokemon company we've got a togepi paper craft you can cut out and make a togepi nope oh, someone already did it it's gone. This is so cool. This is so cool and so nostalgic. Like, I remember when the first Pokemon movie came out. It was a huge deal. Did this come out when the movie came out or like afterwards as a, a look back at the movie? Let's see if there's a publication date in here somewhere. God, this is so cool. I remember all these scenes. Amazing. Meowth versus Meowth. The clone Pokemon. Bring those back to Pokemon Go. Wow, are these the voice actors? Satoshi, yeah, these are the voice actors. Pikachu, this is, this is the voice of Pikachu. That's Ash. Mewtwo, this is Mewtwo's voice actor. This was the Pikachu, Pikachu party island thing, right? I barely remember this. Pocket Monsters part two, coming in 1999. All right, so this is old. It's got an ad for the, for the second movie? Pocket or the second game, gold and silver? What is that? There's some sick merch in here. Togepi merch? Where's Zoe? 5,000 yen for the fat Pikachu. 5,000 yen for a Togepi plush. 2,000 yen for the hat. Imagine finding some of this merch around. I bet that stuff's hard to find. Ugh, even more. More Pokemon paper craft, like the Togepi from the front. You think they're still selling these? 400 yen. Wow, and then this side looks so sick. Like Blastoise? Comics? Rizadon? How come this fat Pikachu is 6,800 yen? It's a one of one? What? Just a bunch of ads for old Pokemon stuff, which is honestly sick to see. This thing is so well preserved. A piece of Pokemon history right here. I was actually supposed to film this video while I was still in Japan and then give this to Zoe, Zoe Two Dots, after I was done. So Zoe, next time I see you, um, this is all yours. Sorry the Togepi's gone. That would have been sick. Next up, here's another one I bought just because it looked old and it was cheap 330 yen two dollars us for some old charmander patches these look like original like pocket monsters this has to be gen 1 era it has to i guess it doesn't have to but how would i know i don't see anything on the back about like a manufactured date but it did cost 600 yen originally so i got it at a discount you know what let's just look at the rest of the small stuff right now too here's cleffa holding a leaf i just thought it was cute it gave me a little uh Totoro vibes. This is a Skia exclusive chess pin figure. Skia is like a Japanese fast food. They make like gyudon rice bowls, beef bowls. It's a 24 hour chain restaurant that's all over the country. 
I guess like the way that McDonald's does Happy Meal toys, maybe Skia had some kind of like promotion. I just thought it was cool because I love finding like strange little collabs like this. And um, like this one, this is an ANA Pikachu sweatband. 220 yen I paid for that. And honestly, I, I am kind of sweating right now. Actually, God, now that I'm doing this, I wonder if someone else's sweat is already on here. <laughs> Just smells old. You know, I'm, maybe I'm not going to put it on. ANA is a Japanese airline, and at, at some point, obviously, they did a Pokemon collab. I think they have, like, Pokemon airplanes and have had Pokemon airplanes. Maybe this was, like, an exclusive giveaway if you flew on the Pokemon plane back in the day, because this thing looks and smells old. I'm going to put it back in the plastic actually. All right, what in the world is this? It is a soft, squishy Piplup wind-up car that is apparently so precious and important it needed to be sealed in an impossible to open taped bag. I literally can't get this open. Oh, it's not like I'm putting it back in the bag. Whee! Cute. Another useless children's toy that I have to find a place for. Why did I buy all these things? I think this is the last like small thing. This one I thought was really cool. When I was at all these thrift stores in like the little figure section where I found this stuff, I would find a lot of these like just kind of rubbery little Pokemon like this. But later on in the trip, I finally found where they came from. This little tuna can. So I guess you could buy like this little tuna can. It's so cool. It has the Gen 1 era branding on it, the Venusaur, the original art. And I guess you would just buy these and open it up and see what Pokemon you get. Again, something that's totally useless and I have absolutely no use for, but hey, people love opening booster packs. Why not open tuna cans and see what Pokemon you get? Next up, how about some snacks, some candy, some Pokemon themed snacks. So we have a gummy Magikarp that's squirting gummy. I don't know, dude. And a fossil. At the convenience stores, they would have these fossil cookies with like actual dinosaur fossils. So it's kind of cool to see like a Pokemon collab. These are over a month. I bought these over a month ago in Japan and they've just been sitting in my backpack. You think they're still good? I mean, it's candy, right? Like it's all fake food. Oh, I'm chilling. 2024. Let's crack some packs. -da. Oh, I got Tentacruel. I'm totally not a candy person. My God, look at the amount of packaging. Should I wash my hands? I've been touching all these old toys. I don't really eat sweets or candy, but it smells kind of good. Yeah, I mean, it tastes like candy. Oh, there's levels. Everything's got to have rarity. Level one star. What is that? Magikarp. Level two. Poliwag. Carvana. Level three, yo, I got a, I got a rare, I got a level three. I don't know, does, does level three mean more rare or less rare? There's more of them. It's a mystery level, of course there is. Who's gonna get the chase gummy? What do you do, open this up and then just like set the uneaten gummy on your shelf? Should I have not eaten that and just like leave this here? As a collector's item? I don't know, what do you do? Collectors, what do you do with this stuff? Going from like a sweet gummy to a chocolate cookie sounds terrible, but Let's see what Pokemon I get in this one. Of course, this has rarity levels too. Level one, Bastiodon, Caracosta. The level threes are Aerodactyl, Kabutops, and Ar Archaeops, why? All right, wish me luck. Oh God, it broke, it's all broken. Oh, I got one of the level threes. Well, I broke the fossil. I broke the fossil, so this one's probably not gonna make it into the museum. And I was always told not to play with my food, but like, you're supposed to break this apart with your hands to like get the fossil out. God, now I definitely need to wash my hands. I have chocolate fingers. Yeah, it tastes like chocolate. It's got like little wafer crunch in it. If you're in the U.S., it's like a crunch. Is that what that candy's called? I don't. I don't eat candy. Mmm, white chocolate. Well, I can't just leave it here. I flew it all the way from Japan. I need to wash my hands and brush my teeth before we continue. I got a little chocolate on my shirt. Ignore that, okay? The next magnificent piece of Pokemon history is this. Look at how faded this is. It was probably sitting in a shop window for years. 880 yen is what I paid for it, about $5. And it is a game where you, 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 you push Pikachu down onto this object. 
and then Pikachu goes, ah, I think. And then at some point, if it gets in your eye, it burns and it'll make you cry. Is that, did I get that right? This actually isn't too old, Sun and Moon era, so 2016. But wow, what a sight. What am I about to do to Pikachu? Oh my God. Nothing about this feels legal. Oh, I didn't even clean the chocolate off my desk. What am I doing? So now that Pikachu's locked in, this one seems pretty self-explanatory. Probably just press the buttons and one of them's gonna make the Pikachu shoot off. And ideally you would have some friends to play this with, but we're trying to have a true and faithful recreation of my childhood here, so. I didn't know how far the Pikachu was gonna go. They made it seem like it was gonna get in my eye. Let's play again. No. Oh. I can't get it to lock. Sorry, Pikachu. Is it the same one? No. This just looks insane. Like imagine if you imagine if you came over to my apartment and like I had this sitting out. Just this. What would you think? You know, if I had filmed this video while I was in Japan with everyone like I was supposed to, I'm sure that this game would have ended in a very drunken night at some point. I am gonna put this back in the box and definitely not do anything else with it, okay? Next up, we have a far less sus game, Pokemon Typing DS, a game that was apparently released in Europe and Australia as well as Japan, but for me, this was my first time ever seeing it, so I copped. 3,300 yen, that's about $20, and then later in the trip, I found a version that was completely boxed for even less than that. And by the way, if you want to see like all the shopping, all the actual exploring of the secondhand stores where I found all this stuff, I'll have a video coming out very soon here on the channel that shows all of that. All right, so this is Pokemon Typing DS, which is going to be absolutely useless to me because why do I need to learn to type in Japanese? I don't know. Maybe I do. Two AA batteries. You got it, dude. So here's my Nintendo DSi that I got on my shopping trip. $8 is what I paid for this. Here's the game, the manual. It's got everything. Okay, now here's the thing. My DS and the game are in Japanese. So how do I connect this keyboard to the DS? Parental controls, touch screen. You know what? Let's just open the game and see what happens. I'm gonna save us all some time and not work my way through reading this. Please turn on the Nintendo wireless keyboard and press any key. Oh, it worked. What? This is so sick. Oh, okay, now what? Nanika ki o oshite ne. Press any key. J for, what is Sceptile's, what? No way. This is, this is actually so sick. I love buying a used game and like seeing people's save files on here. We have Shotaro, Papa, and Yoko. I, I'm not gonna start a new game. Let's be honest, I'm not gonna play this game after this video ends, but it's so sick. E, Imolga, F. Fushigi dane. I already know that one. G. Ghosto. In case you didn't know, Haunter's Japanese name is Ghost. Ghosto. K. Enter. Oh, I chose a I chose a path. Starto. Enter. What do I do? Oh my god. A. Tirati N. Dude, this game is amazing. Mame pato. Did I win? Oh, Fushigi Bana. Oh. Where I'm literally supposed to type the name of the Pokemon that shows up. I got fourth place. That's it. Suki A. Let's go next. I want to play the same level. I'm having so much fun right now. I'm just going to type S. Tirati. Where is that? Where is the... It's a Japanese keyboard. Where is the thing? How do I type that on a Japanese keyboard? Ah, uh, Kimori. Ew. Oh, jeez. G. Yanapu. Mame pato. Oh god. 
Ziguzaguma, 26-70. I just crushed Shotaro's high score. Shotaro's probably like eight years old. Still, get good, bro. I don't know what level I'm playing, but... This... P. Oh, it's unknown level. Now you, you, you have to know how to read unknown letters. I'm having so much more fun than I expected. W. O. C. I. L. Gold medal. All right, all right, all right. I gotta stop. This is awesome. Shotaro, you're welcome. Set some new PBs for you. Good thing I found this $8 DSi to play it on. Actually, this wasn't even the cheapest DS that I bought on the trip. Check out the other video. Sick game, honestly. Most fun out of everything that I've gotten so far. That's kind of tough to follow, but I saved the best for last. This was the coolest thing that I found in Japan. A Pocket Monsters Gen 1 era Togepi was just introduced. Gachapon machine. Complete in box, 3,300 yen. That's about $20 US and I felt like it kid in a candy store when I found this. We got the base. Look at this. An entire Gachapon machine. It came with these fake coins, but they're actually exactly the same size as a 500 yen coin. So you could use real money. You could charge your friends real money to use your Gachapon machine, or they could literally just like open the top of it and take whatever they want out of it. We'll check this out. Dude, this thing is so sick. First of all, I love that it's like Gen 1 era. Like this thing is probably 25 years old. With Togepi being the only Gen 2 Pokemon on here, I would guess that this is between Gen 1 and Gen 2. About the same time as the Mewtwo Strikes Back book that we had earlier. Anyway, without any further ado, here's your 100 yen plastic coin. Stick it in the coin slot. Turn it. It's, it's a Gachapon machine. What did you expect it to do? What did I get? What did I get? I got a little card and a soda can. What else? I want more. Oh, oh, we got a Pokemon. We got Psyduck. There's also like little cards. There's like a game that comes with it. It's almost like a bingo. Like you get the cards in addition to whatever toy you get. And then you try to, I guess, get them all, right? Dude, I could totally see this being a great motivator for me to do my chores as a kid. Take out the trash, earn a coin, get to put the coin in the Gachapon machine. I get my toy as a reward. Meowth. And then when I fill up the bingo card, I like get to go spend the night at my friend's house or something. This would be so sick, dude. It's really taking me back to a, a Japanese kid's childhood in the 90s. This would have been so cool to have. This is like the one cool thing that I would actually put on display here. If I could find a room for it. I have no idea where I would put this. Should I get rid of some plushies to fit this up on the shelf? All right. Excuse me, sumimasen. Now, what is in this box? Filming equipment, apparently. Oh, da da. No way. That looks so cool. Oh my god. Now, when you see that in the background of all my videos, I, I don't know. You were here first. I'm gonna think of something cool to do with it. This thing might appear in a Pokemon Go challenge video sometime in the future. All right, one last flex. I didn't buy this on this trip to Japan, but this is one of my favorite things. I definitely wouldn't consider myself a collector, but this is one of the coolest things in my small collection. It's a yellow version. A boxed Japanese yellow version, signed by Masuda-san and Morimoto-san. Two of the OGs, two of the guys who worked on developing, creating this game. I bought this boxed yellow version in Japan for like 50 bucks. I actually played it. This game has my save file on it. And then I flew from Japan to Washington DC for the Pokemon World Championships in 2019. I was casting, I was hosting the Pokemon Go Invitational Tournament, and I was able to get the box signed by Masuda and Morimoto. Just kind of worked out. Like I just happened to buy the thing, and then I got the opportunity to get it signed by them. 
at Worlds. But all of those Pokemon products aren't the only things that I found at secondhand stores in Japan. If you want to see a video about this beautiful Game Boy, check it out right here. And if you want to see the process of actually going to all of those stores, sifting through everything, looking for all of this stuff, that video will be here soon. Very soon. It might already be there. Click on it if it is. If it's not, watch this one. And then come back and check that one out later. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.